Well, the motto here at the Hope Hostel in Kilgali is come as a guest, leave as a friend. This is, frankly, the accommodation that the British government hope that hundreds, thousands of failed migrants to the UK will end up here in Rwanda. But at the moment, there's no one in them. They're entirely empty. And that is because, of course, of those court rulings, which meant that those planes could not take off, which has meant that the government's policy is in peril. They insist, and the Prime Minister here in Rwanda is insistent, that he wants this plan to work, that it's a sensible plan, a plan that will act as a deterrent to stop people crossing the English Channel in those small boats. But it is also a costlier plan, a plan that's cost over £100 million to UK taxpayers. And the big question for the government is, can they make it work? But also a big question for us, given the questions that are being raised, given the comments by Prince Charles, who allegedly called this uh, appalling, this policy, is what is the actual accommodation like? What are the areas, the facilities like for the migrants that may well end up here? So let's have a look inside. And so this is the main reception area inside uh, the hostel. As you can see, these gentlemen here are going to check people in. And also what's notable, uh, if you look at this, is that lots of the signs actually are on different languages, a recognition that if, and it is a big if, uh, migrants do arrive here, they will be from uh, many different parts of the world. But there are 50 rooms in this complex, two people to a room, it could house up to 100 people. Let's have, let's have a look upstairs. The hostel is equipped with all sorts of stuff that you need for modern life, unsurprisingly. They've got internet rooms with laptops and computers that people access the internet, uh, communal laundry spaces here, and also communal bathrooms that the migrants uh, will be able uh, to use. Well, there's lots of communal space here for uh, the people who potentially move here, including prayer rooms. But we have to remember that the Labour Party have branded this as unworkable, but also as immoral and a policy uh, that they do not think should be happening. And we know also that there are many legal cases against all of this. And those cases, those legal proceedings are likely to continue for the weeks and months to come. So as you can see, the facilities are pretty spacious, pretty airy. Frankly, they're quite smart in uh, this complex and we take you through to kind of show you what the rooms are like as I say the rooms are going to be shared uh, ultimately but you know they are very tidy they're very clean uh, there's a lot of space here even for uh, two people and in the end the government are hoping they're going to fill these rooms and the Rwandans it must be said themselves are very proud of these facilities and it's not just this complex there are others on standby as well but the big question of course for the government is ultimately, will people end up in these rooms? They've paid 120 million quid for them. The Rwandans tell them us they've already received that money. They've already spent that money. The big question is, if they cannot get this policy to work, if those planes do not take off, will that money ultimately have been wasted for British taxpayers?